It's time for another gardening update, so let's get out there and take a look. The potatoes I'm growing in the straw are starting to stick up above the straw now, so I'll just keep adding straw as needed. The roller coaster type weather we had in the month of March wasn't ideal for growing peas. The up and down temperatures delayed the germination quite a bit, so they're behind where they were last year. I grew them in a plastic pot last year and they did pretty well. But the weather wasn't so up and down, so they germinated a lot earlier. I'm keeping my fingers crossed for some cooler weather so these peas have time to mature before it gets too hot for them. As well as planting potatoes in straw, I planted six grow bags with potatoes. I planted two each of three different types. I started by filling the grow bags about one third of the way with soil. Then I pushed my seed potatoes down into the soil a little bit. I used three in each bag and then I covered them with more soil. As the potato plants grow I'll add more soil around them until the bag is completely full of soil. I'm looking forward to seeing how each type does compared to the others. I planted some purple potatoes last year and they didn't work out too well so I'm going to give it one more try. These are purple majesty. Right next to those are red Pontiac. Those did well for me in straw last year, so I'm hoping they'll do well in the grow bags. And the last type in the grow bags is Kennebec. I've grown those before, and they can grow pretty large. The lettuce is starting to come up very well. I'm growing five different types this year. My favorite five from 12 types I tried last year. Of the five different herbs we planted last week, only basil has started to sprout so far. The French sorrel is doing very well. I divided that last year from one clump. Now I have two clumps and I also gave some away. I also divided the rhubarb and now instead of just one I have five and I could have had six but one didn't make it. The fennel is starting to grow pretty well. I'm over six feet tall and the fennel will be taller than I am before the season is over. All around the fennel plant I noticed that we had very small volunteer fennel plants coming up and there are probably several dozen of them. What you see sprouting here are radishes. This variety is called red rat's tail. This variety is grown for the seed pods instead of the roots. Most radishes will produce flowers if you let them grow long enough and then they'll produce seed pods after that. The seed pods are mildly spicy and can be eaten raw, cooked, or even pickled. This is the type of corn I'll be growing this year. I crossed japonica corn with some ornamental popcorn and this is what I got. I'll be interested to see how it turns out. Japonica corn has variegated leaves like you see here. It produces corn that looks like this. Here's a look at the ornamental popcorn that I used for the original cross. Last year the resulting hybrid corn didn't have any variegated leaves so I'm hoping I can produce some this year with variegated leaves. We'll just have to wait a few months to find out. Here's what's left of last year's Musa Basju banana stems and we already have growth coming out of a couple of them. It's hard to believe that in just a few months these will be taller than the shed. This is the Chicago Cole Hardy fig that I tried to protect over the winter. As you can see in here, the top part looks pretty dead. Even if the entire stems are dead, I'm confident that it will come up from the roots, but I was hoping that the stems would stay alive. We really enjoyed the few figs that we got last year and we were hoping to get a lot more. The asparagus is later than it usually is and we're not getting as much as we usually do. But the ones we are getting are larger in diameter than they usually are. I planted two types of onions. The first one is red candy apple. This is one I haven't grown before. The second type that I'm growing is 10-15 sweet onion. That's another new one for us. I've also been hardening off plants to get them ready to go outside. Whenever I start hardening off a tray of plants, I usually start them off in the shade first, just a little while each day. 
Then I increase the time as the days go by. After several days in the shade, I use the shadow cast from our house to get them used to the sun. I set them next to the edge of the shadow on the east side of the house, and as the shadow moves, it covers up the tray. That way, if I forget they're out there, I won't accidentally leave them out in the sun too long. Then each day, I move them a little farther from the edge of the shadow. Our blackberries are starting to leaf out well, and it won't be long till we have blooms on them. These are Washita blackberries, and they are thornless. The canes that sprout from the ground this year will produce berries next year, and then they'll die. The blackberry canes have a two-year life cycle. As recently as last week, we had a hard freeze here, and it got cold enough to freeze the bird bath, but inside the straw bale, it was 100 degrees. In a week or so, those will cool down inside, then it'll be time to get them ready to plant. Our old Oreo feeders were starting to get a little shabby looking, so we decided to get a new one. Here's one of our old feeders from a few years ago. Orioles love grape jelly, and once they find it, they'll just keep coming back. House finches also eat grape jelly, but it doesn't seem like they eat as much as the Orioles. Cardinals also visit the feeders once in a while. This is an F5 Oda crossed with an unknown hot pepper. These have always started out purple and then changed to red. But in this generation, they're changing to yellow first before they go to red, which is kind of a new development. The yellow changes gradually, and sometimes it looks like it's a little bit orange before it turns to red. I'll be doing a taste test on these soon, and I hope they keep all the heat they had in the last generation because they lost quite a bit in the generation before. Here's a look at some of the color changes they go through. You'll just have to take my word for it, but the on-screen color really doesn't do them justice. Some of the other peppers indoors are starting to ripen also, so we'll be able to move on to the next generation very soon. Growing some of these peppers 365 days a year has dramatically shortened the time it will take me to stabilize them. As if I didn't have enough pepper projects going already, I crossed a Guernica pepper with one of these. And the best I can tell, the cross was successful. Here's a look at all the stuff we have indoors. A lot of this stuff will be going outside very soon. I'm hoping in the next week or so. Along with doing some pepper breeding, I also plan to do some tomato breeding this year. I think it's going to be a fun year. If you want to follow along and you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.